Okay, good morning. We're out in the hills again today, gonna make another trip uh, down this canyon that's uh, on the other side of me here. Uh, we've got the four-wheeler today, and there's Briggs. He's gonna be doing a lot of the filming. Uh, so before we get uh, headed out, I just wanted to do a little intro of where we're going. Uh, so let's look at the geologic map here. Again, this is the geologic map of the Black Hills. So it's, uh, it's quite extensive from south to north. It's uh, about 100 miles or so and uh, 40 miles east to west. And we're going to be looking in this little area where the arrow is. Uh, and you can see by the color on here, we're mainly in this light tan and this uh, green color. Uh, the light tan is uh, mainly uh, quartzites, uh, cherts, and uh, some, some phyllite uh, material and, and, amph and um, schists. And we'll look at some of those when we get up there. Uh, the green is primarily uh, metabasalt units. And so these are all uh, marine deposits. The original rocks were deposited uh, in the sea. Uh, the shallow is actually a shallow sea and a sequence of uh, sands and um, some clay and silts that metamorphosed into one of the units. And then, then there were a series of basalt flows uh, submarine basalt flows and their pillow basalts. And so that large map is shows a large area in relatively small detail. Uh, but then the geologic map for the quadrangle has been also uh, mapped. This is a section of the uh, quadrangle map. Quadrangle is roughly 36 square miles. That's kind of the same area we looked at. It's kind of got a tan uh, area. Those are the uh, the uh, quartzites and, and uh, schists and slates, and then the green areas are mostly the metabasalts. And the, uh, in fact, the description says that they're pillow basalts. Uh, I've never seen pillows up here, but let's go uh, get the four-wheeler unloaded and take off and run up this canyon and see what we see. So let's go exploring. Okay, we're on the four-wheeler, we're loaded up, we're ready to head out. We're gonna be going up this uh, gulch in front of us. It's called Pony Gulch, and it takes us to one of my favorite places in the Black Hills. So let's take a look here as we get going. Okay, we are up at the, oh, I guess the, kind of the western margin of uh, Pony Gulch. And uh, the, the rocks in this area, again, consist of those two primary families of, of quartzites and cherts with uh, schists and phyllites. And then part of the Rapid Creek Greenstone, which includes the uh, metabasalts and pillow basalts. And, on the uh, geologic map, this outcrop that you can see right up ahead of us is supposed to be the uh, part of the Rapid Creek uh, greenstone uh, basalt, metabasalt. So we're gonna try to work our way up there. If we can get through all these down trees.
Okay, so here we are at the first outcrop. This is really pretty stuff. There's a big quartz nodule, full of quartz. So this is, uh, in parts in here, it does kind of alter as you walk through this, but it's, it's quartzites and, uh, and cherts. And you can see the kind of the veining in it. These are very, very resistant rocks and they, they persist in the weathering environment for tremendous amounts of time. And down on the flats in Rapid City and even out in the Badlands, a lot of the cobbles and things you see out there are originated from up here in this area. So really, really beautiful rock, um, highly fractured. You can see near vertical fractures in here. This stuff has been been uh, metamorphosed and folded and refolded uh, a number of times uh, at least at least five major folding episodes that occurred uh, so these things are twisted all over the place I'm gonna try to break a chunk off of this so let's see what we can it's really really tough let's see if I can get a piece to come off find a fracture maybe So I think this is pretty much just a quartzite. Yes, uh, very, very fine grain. Uh, most of the grains look, look clear. So clear grains, uh, highly rounded. So again, this was a, a shallow sand deposit in the sea. Uh, this is early Proterozoic, so there's a, I'm aware of at least one uh, uranium lead date from probably not more than two or three miles north of us, and these same rocks exist all through this belt, and it has a, a date on it at uh, 1865 million years, so 1.865 billion years was when uh, this material was metamorphosed. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a very, very, very fine grain, very, very pretty. So we'll bag it and tag it and take a look at it uh, under the microscope here later. Okay, so I don't see anything that indicates uh, basalt flows here. So again, the, these individual little outcrops in here, they come and they go, and I don't know what the mappers were seeing. There's some more outcrop right up here behind us. I think we'll walk over there and see, and maybe we can see something different. top and that winded me. I get winded pretty easy these days but I can keep going. So so far I don't see anything that looks any different than that first outcrop that still looks like, like quartzites. 
fact, I just smell it there too. Really good flinty smell. Yeah, really strong. Well, I'll try to sneak under this log here. Looks like the squirrels have been busy. Ah, okay. Well, I was wrong. This is different. Okay, there. Uh, let me get it in the sun. Don't know if you can see that right at the tip of my finger. We'll definitely look at it at the house and under the microscope, but that looks like a, a Grunerite splay. And there's another one right there. So we are, I think, trending more now into uh, the other suite of rocks in here I forgot to mention are those uh, that are the banded iron materials. And that those are strongly uh, uh, ore grade in many por portions of the Black Hills. And that's what this is right here. So Grunerite, uh, which is a, a fibrous amphibole mineral that kind of splays out in a kind of a rosette pattern, is, is usually something that's indicative of uh, potential for, for ore. And so this rock here is different. Just a few feet away though, here's a, here's a quartz vein. So there's quartz veins in here. And then there's this dark uh, black uh, philitic uh, material uh, that, that when I broke this off, it has a grunerite in it. So we'll take and trim this down and we'll take this back also and look at this. So uh, it is possible then that we are on the, the metabasalts right here. Um, you might have to hunt around quite a bit to find uh, pillow structures. Like I said, I've never seen any up here and I've crawled around up on the top up here on these things trying to, trying to see them. But a metamorphic pillow, I don't know what that would look like. Okay, we're pretty close to where we were on that um, meta basalt. And we're gonna hike up the top of this little hill here. Okay, here we are, top of the ridge, a lot of trees, unfortunately. Let's try to get a, get a view over here. Okay, that's looking west. Um, the town of Rochford is probably oh three or four miles it's probably in this gulch right over here it'd be Rochford Gulch I think and that's where Rapid Creek flows through so it comes behind that hill and then down in this gulch and flows around the ridge in front of us so if we look back east this is what it looks like east hung up there and you can see the, the peaks through the through the trees there it's 
got blue haze out here, if you've noticed. So this is uh, smoke from forest fires further to the west. I'm not sure where, uh, California, Oregon, Washington. And the entire hills are shrouded in this blue smoke. Uh, it rained really good yesterday afternoon, uh, late evening, or early evening. And uh, almost as soon as the rain quit, the smoke rolled back in. So it must be a pretty heavy band coming from the, coming from the west. But a beautiful vista up here. I think we're right at 6,000 feet elevation. Let me get my GPS unhooked off my belt. We are 6,031 feet right here. So this is a pretty good ridge uh, looking off to the, the west and that far western horizon, that flat surface that you see over there to the west. That is, that ranges between 6,600 to 6,900 is probably a pretty uh, consistent elevation across that, that surface. And most of that consists of the Madison limestone uh, that was over the entire hills, was over us at one time too, but it's since eroded from here, but it still exists as a as a, a flat surface on the western side of the Black Hills. So that's a recharge zone. Uh, our groundwater sources from there, the source of most of the springs and the creeks uh, come down through the, soak down through the Madison, and then when they hit the Imperinville rock below, mainly the crystalline rock, the Precambrian rock, then they flow out as live streams and then work their way eastward across the Black Hills. Okay, well, we just got back down in uh, the valley. A uh, storm has kicked up, and the thunder is kicking off, and the map, I do have reception here on my 5G, and the map shows that the thunderstorms are moving in and are building further to the west. So this looks like it's going to be one of those typical uh, Black Hill summer storms to where it's going to kick up with the rain and it might rain for a half hour, it might rain for two hours, and it might just continue to build to the west and be a continuous rain uh, through the afternoon. So we are going to forego heading up to the peaks that we are going to head up to. Uh, we would get stuck up there right when the rain gets started here. So we are going to head it back to the house. just got back to the truck and got the four-wheeler loaded and it is raining so it's thundering and raining and this will probably keep up for a good part of the afternoon uh, typical of these storms uh, this type of time of year so four-wheeler is uh, loaded up and we're ready to head out 